Hi everyone, so today I'm going to talk about how I got into my diagnostic medical sonography program. I'm going to tell you everything about what classes I took from when the start of when I came out of high school to how I initially applied to the program. Before I get started, I just want to make it very clear that this is the process of what I did to get into my program for my specific program. Each program has their own prerequisites, has their own standardized testing, and um, I'm just going to explain to you what I exactly did for my program and what I did coming out of high school. So the first thing I had to do to get to where I am now is that I had to graduate high school. After I graduated high school, I applied to my local community college and I just applied to be a student there and start taking my general education classes. As you know, general education classes such as English 101, college level math, like algebra, and science, I want to say. I think I took biology 101. Those were the basic classes that I had to take in my general requirements. I didn't know what to take, so I just took the very minimal basic classes. Also, these classes that I took were also prerequisites for the prerequisites classes that I needed. For example, um, I had to take biology to get into anatomy and physiology, and anatomy and physiology was one of the main prerequisites that I had to take getting into my program. So the first thing I did before I applied to any of the classes that I took was to look up all of the accredited diagnostic medical sonography programs in my state. So in the state of Maryland, there are only four diagnostic medical sonography programs, which includes John Hopkins, UMBC, Howard, and my school, Montgomery College. So what I basically did, I just printed out all of the admission requirements, the prerequisite requirements. I compared all four of the programs, each by picking out which classes they all basically had in common. Once I narrowed down all of the classes I needed to take, I just started taking the classes semester by semester, and then eventually I was able to make it into anatomy and physiology, which was a very important class I had to take for all of the programs. Also, to be honest, taking anatomy and physiology in general, if you want to go anywhere in the medical field, would be a good idea because I feel like anatomy and physiology was a very challenging class and I feel like that gave me a little taste of what the medical field is and what it requires. It's a completely different language and I feel like if you could get through those classes then you are cut out for the medical field. I actually almost failed it. Um, I was crying so hard. I thought it was so difficult to take. Um, I, I had a great teacher. It's just it didn't click with me and I felt like if I couldn't get through this class then I wouldn't have been able to get through any healthcare program. Um, I actually ended up passing at like the slightest bit of chance at like a 70. I passed like right at a C. I was so terrified because I was like a D average student in that class and I ended up passing. Um, once I got into anatomy and physiology too was when it got a little bit easier. I was used to the study habits, like the workload. So um, I got a little bit more comfortable when it came to that. So if that gives you any hope, if you hate anatomy and physiology, I ended up passing. Some other classes that I took that weren't core classes such as math, English, science was I had to take communications which I found very helpful because I feel like that's where I get my good communication skills from and also it'll be very helpful talking to your patients if you have good communication skills. I also had to take psychology. I feel like that was pretty helpful with dealing with patient care. I believe at the time that I was taking my prerequisites, statistics was one of the requirements after college level math. So I did take I did take statistics, which was kind of sucky, but I felt like it was a very easy class for me. And I think that was one of the requirements for one of the programs. So I was like, why not? I might as well continue the classes. So my main prerequisite classes that I took overall was English 101, English 102, Biology 101, so I could get into anatomy and physiology. After biology, I took anatomy and physiology one, anatomy and physiology two, and then I also took intro to physics. I felt it was very challenging, but I actually took intro to physics. It was only a two credit course. Um, most of the programs I needed 
uh, to take a three credit course and unfortunately I only took a two credit course so at the end of all my classes I ended up just applying to Montgomery College I gambled up all of my classes just to apply to this one program even though I took prerequisites for all the other programs all because I didn't look carefully and I only took a two credit physics class I mean it turned out great for me because I got in but um, definitely when you are trying to take all your classes make sure you're taking the right amount of credits that you need to take because um, it could also bite you in the butt afterwards when you're trying to transfer into a program. Some other classes that I had to take before I got into the program which I was allowed to take it in the program but I felt like it looked better if I took it before I got into the program was medical terminology one, medical terminology two, and concepts of diseases. So I really found medical terminology to be very helpful because like I said, the medical field is completely different language and learning just the medical terminology and how the words are broken up such as like the prefixes and suffixes will get you through reading anything in the medical field because literally all the words in the medical field are the same exact word just bunched together so I thought that was really helpful. Um, concepts of diseases I took it was an online class and it just kind of went through how pathology works different pathologies in the body and that was pretty helpful because in my ultrasound program we talk a lot about uh, diseases. Another big requirement in getting into my program was taking a standardized test called the T's test um, this T's test is kind of like an accumulative test that tests all your knowledge in reading, English, math, and science. I found that it was very similar to the SATs, um, except for they added science in. So I had just taken my SATs like out of high school, so I thought that I was pretty prepared for the T's test. I did try to study, but it's kind of hard to study on something that you don't really know what's on it. So I believe at the time that I was taking my test, the requirements for passing of the T's test was a 74, and I think I got around like a 76. So I only had a little bit two points over above, which was okay. I believe now the passing to get into the program is a lot lower now. I want to say it's like a 66. Um, but of course you would have to look that up yourself on the program website. A lot of people ask me if you have to be smart to get into the program. Um, if you're asking because you have to get a good GPA, I personally didn't have the best GPA. I probably had like a 3.3 overall transferring into my program, but at the time that I was applying, GPA didn't matter at all. Also, previous degrees did not matter at all. Um, it was kind of just like a check mark if you had a GPA over a 2.0 and that was it. It didn't require anything, you don't get any special treatment if you had a degree, if you're a doctor, or if you had a 4.0 average. I believe nowadays getting into my program they do have a point system that if you have a 4.0 you get a certain amount of points or if you had a previous degree you do, but at the time it didn't matter at all. So I thought that was pretty helpful because I wasn't the best scholar. After I finished taking all of my prerequisites for the programs, um, all the deadlines were at different times. So the first deadline I was able to apply to was the Montgomery College deadline and so what I did is I just got all my transcripts ready and then I turned in all of my applications in my grades, my transcripts, all of that. And then I kind of just gambled all of my bets on getting into Montgomery College because I wasn't ready to apply to any of the other programs such as John Hopkins. So I kind of just hoped very very hard that I would get into Montgomery College and then I probably didn't get my results until a month later I got it in the mail and then I found out I got in so the moral of me sharing this is basically that coming out of high school I plan really hard to organize what classes I should be taking each semester and when I would be done with all the classes in order to apply just in time for the deadline. So if you are looking into getting into a program in ultrasound, be sure to look up all of the prerequisites for the classes, even make um, also look up the prerequisites for the prerequisites, like I said, like how you had to take biology before anatomy and physiology. And then also be sure to make sure that the program is accredited. That is very important. What that means is that you are able to sit for your board exam afterwards. Um, my program at Montgomery College offers a 
associate's degree in diagnostic medical sonography and a certification afterwards so I'm able to sit for my board exam. A lot of the other programs in my state such as UMBC and John Hopkins only offers a certification but those programs are a lot shorter which is why they don't offer the degree and it's not specifically a part of the school. So if you are looking to get into getting a degree and a certification, make sure that whatever school or program you apply to offers that and make sure it is accredited because if it's not accredited, you'll be wasting your time and then you won't be able to sit for your board exam afterwards. So after I did all of my classes, I got into the program and then I was able to start the program the following summer when I got accepted and then here I am now. Um, I hope you found this video very helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe and don't forget to follow me on Instagram at ChristyDMS. There you can also contact me if you have any other questions or recommendations for other videos.